Today is March 18th. The MLB Spring Breakout game was fun. Bucks come out of nowhere with a couple moves on Friday, and we're more than halfway through spring games. What, what do we know? Where are we going? You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh and I am joined as always by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? How's it going, man? Wearing our St. Patrick's Day clothes today. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, lad. Top of the morning to you. The Pittsburgh way would be Top of the morning <sighs> to Yins, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Yeah. I think that's it. Yep. So we're Bro, actually. I've, I've been in. A, I've been in a mood today, man. Yeah. I have a Celtic radio on all day at work. It's been a good day. <laughs> we're actually recording this Saturday night. You got a long, long day at work tomorrow, mm-hmm. and so Saturday night. So we did put our green on uh, yep. for the episode, like we said we would, but we'll be wearing it on Sunday. So for mm-hmm. the listeners, we wore it yesterday. <laughs> but yeah, excited. I heard so yeah. I've heard that Bradenton has like a big St. Patrick's Day parade. I'd love to be down there for that sometime. That'd so may, maybe we picked the wrong time to be down there. Maybe yeah. next year we kind of think about putting it around that or something. I don't know. We'll think about it. It's food for thought. Food for thought. All right, we've got uh, a few things to talk about today. Spring breakout game happened this week. Um, some injury updates a little bit. Uh, Pirates signed Michael Taylor and Domingo Herman on Friday out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, we're going to take a look at the rotation options and the the roster heading into the season, what we think right now with about seven games left. Uh, now, for you and I, right, it's eight games left because there's still Sunday's game. Right. Um, but as far as, you know, as far as it goes, there's, you know, seven, eight games left in the spring. And it's about time to start knowing who's coming ahead and who's falling behind. And even though I think that they could let that go all the way, there's enough time to make that decision last minute. Yeah. Uh, I think that they've got some ideas, and uh, that's basically what we'll talk about. So let's uh, let's get into the spring breakout game that happened on Thursday. Uh, interestingly, if you look at the statistics, this is something I found out. That's a minor league game that doesn't show up in spring training stats. So if you yeah. see like, well, I thought Skeens threw it a little bit more than that. Well, yeah, he threw a little bit more than that. But in that spring breakout game, that is a minor league game. That doesn't count in spring training statistics. And with that said, I know this isn't spring breakout game, but I might as well say it. All those, uh, all the work that they're doing behind the scenes over at Pirate City or whatever also aren't showing up, right? These guys are pitching right. more. yeah. Right, sure. And they're hitting more. Like, you know what I mean? There's more going on that we don't see. So when you Mm -hmm. say, like, man, they're really not stretching so-and-so out, they are. They are. We just don't know about it. Right. Uh, Pitching uh, was on display. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Bro, we gave up the one hit, and it was a bunt. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I'll say like the Orioles had two pitchers. Each went each went yeah. three innings. And Trace Bright, the the second pitcher who came in, the lefty was good too. But Trace Bright, his stuff was nasty. Yeah, I was really impressed. But we're not here to talk about him. <laughs> Paul Skeen starts off the game one hundred one one hundred one one hundred two. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. And this mm-hmm. is a, this is these are top prospects too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's the one that ended up with that little butt single too. 
That dude can fly. He can fly. <laughs> fly. But Jeez. it doesn't help when you say, try to hit this. Right. He straight up challenged him. Yeah. Well, he was, I, you could tell he was amped. That was important to him, I think. Yeah. He was amped Hell for yeah. it. He was going for it. Um, mm. I had a buddy say, yeah, they're probably not, uh, they're probably not adjusted to 102 yet this early in spring. And I said, you don't adjust to 102. <laughs> You just don't. You just don't. You yeah. just you close yeah. your eyes and swing, and then <laughs> yeah. you, you don't adjust. You swing but, hard in case you hit it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just not <laughs> not something that you can adjust to. Um, obviously, we had our conversation last week about pitch. It was just last week, right? About pitching injuries and everything. Mm -hmm. He only had one inning to throw there. Um, you know, maybe you'd hope he paces himself when he goes out there for some games and not gets injured, but this guy's a freak yeah. too. You just don't know. But he knew right. he had one inning. Yeah, I mean, yep. You'd like to see him be able to play that too, like like you were saying, like 97, 98. Right. I know it's, it's still hard. It's not like he's like throwing 92. You know what I mean? Right. He's still, yeah, still going to hit upper 90 just – with yeah. ease too. Like, well, and he, he got Holiday with the change up followed uh following the slider that, pitch was that nasty. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that we said that we noticed when we were there was like he didn't have a feel for his change up yet and it seemed like when he followed the slider that he got him to swing and miss at the top. Mm -hmm. He followed that with the change up which was still arm side, right? But yeah. he swings because he just threw the slider. I think one or two pitches before that, and so I mean, he had no chance. Mm -mm. And this is—he oh, was he threw back-to-back -back changeups to strike him out, didn't he? I thought the first one was a slider. It might have been the, but I the it was swing and miss was the was I thought was because it broke towards Holiday. Yeah, and then I, I thought, thought the he next him pitch. Off on two. Well, let, did he foul one of them off? Because. That was strike two was this well, maybe strike one was the slider. I don't know. Strike one was the slider because he went down 3 0. Okay. Or 2 0, 2 0, then the slider, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, exactly, and then he, and then maybe, yeah, whatever it was. He you know, the change up got him. That was the that was that's the pitch yeah. he needs to work on. Um last time he threw a curveball to him. So we know that there's a curveball that still is kind of in development as well. But man, he was lights out. Felt good after the holiday one too. Felt mm -hmm. good. He's got him. He's zero for two now against Skeens. Yeah. Um, dude, this guy's just another animal. Like he's he's a different he's a different human for sure. Mm -hmm. Very excited. About I had a this. conversation with, with with a guy down here. He's a big LSU fan, right? And he's like, "Oh, he's gonna be in the bigs." I'm like, "Oh, we just got to get him that five day." You know, yeah. right, routine. Yeah, physically, that's, that's I think that's pretty the main, much what he's got to do. That's yeah. the main concern is physically, right? Mm -hmm. He wasn't the only one. So Ashcraft has actually impressed us throughout the spring in the little sprinkles. So um, I think he gave up the lone run in this, but maybe a couple walks in there. But he was still good. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I mean, Hunter Barco threw two innings very good. And I think that that kind of uh, got some people excited again. You know what I mean? Like, okay, mm -hmm. well, we, you know, like to see that. Bubba Chandler is he's on that level too. He, he's a he's oh, a different what, guy. Hey, did you hear Hannah Myers talk to him about closing? Oh, Hannah Mears. She's like next. Yeah. Ne or Hannah Mears. Yeah, she's she's like next next closer. He goes, oh gosh, no. <laughs> He goes, I'll stick to starting. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But no, yeah, he was good, man. I mean, there's a lot that's there's a lot that's good. So Solomino didn't get to pitch in this um because he's he was he had just been sick. Mm -hmm. Um so he didn't get to pitch. Uh Harrington, we know, had some what was it, like some shoulder tightness or something like that. Uh that kind of got him out so and he's I think he's thrown since but not in this right he's not going to be in this Jared Jones not included in this they've said that he's got a shot to get 
to get a spot. We'll talk about that later. But like, is that maybe why? I don't know. Right. But it was very exciting. Um, Tamar was fun, but the show was really pitching that yeah. n- that night. So, all right, let's get into some quick hits here. Uh, Grandall update. He is catching and hitting, but not running the bases. Uh, I was talking to uh, Gary from the fan forum over there, and he also mentioned this on their show this week, that he was catching, hitting, not running the bases. That, that's been reported as well. But also that Kutch was not running the bases at Pirate City. And so that was like, oh, no. But he was in the lineup uh, Saturday, DH, got a couple hits, ran the bases. All's fine. I mean, <laughs> seems like it. He dealt yeah. with the sickness too, right, that they've been passing around. Um, and so, yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, maybe maybe there's nothing there as far as, the, as, far as yeah. like, being injured or whatever. Uh, G1 Bay still dealing with a hip injury. I think it's pretty safe to say he's going to start the season on the IL. I mean, he's barely played. Right. And the other quick hit here is Domingo Herman signs a, a minor league deal with an incentive to make it to the MLB. He'll get like 1.5, 1.25. I, I think there's extra incentives in there. I'm not really sure ex- the exact numbers. They're somewhere around there. At first it was just reported as 1.5 and then there was some sort of 1.25 thrown in there. So I don't really know. Like I, I don't, I didn't get to actually see what that is. The, the reports are out there. You can go look. <laughs> I don't, I just, I don't. The point is, is we're talking about the signing and yeah. there is a mutual option too for like 2 million, 2.5 or something like that for, two, for 2025. Obviously, assuming he makes it to the majors, that is a mutual option. Uh, This one was a little bit surprising. We're going to talk about Taylor after this, but this one was a little bit surprising afterwards. And immediate reaction was, um, I guess, kind of one of those, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) Kind of, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. You and I don't talk a lot about – we, we kind of teeter around this stuff, right? We like to talk baseball. We don't talk a lot mm-hmm. about, like, off-field stuff, right? Right. We can leave our opinions of those things aside for, for a while. For me, Domingo Herman is not an off-the-field – it's an off-the-field. It's not a – I guess it is considered off-the-field, but it directly impacts the clubhouse. Yeah. He has an alcohol, or he has had, let's let's benefit of the doubt here, he has had an alcohol problem. It has been completely away from the clubhouse. It's affected things, and he's gotten into some trouble there. But as far as a baseball team and baseball things, it is affected just last year in the clubhouse. The, you know, yeah. an incident where there was... Too much alcohol consumed and uh, <laughs> some kind of flipping tables kind of thing, right? Uh, you can look it up. It's it's out there. I don't want to go too far. For me, this these are the kinds of things that I say, are, are we sure we want to go there, right? Yeah. And I kind of made a comment that says, if I'm signing him to a deal, I have a, it's a conditional deal. This was the way I said it. You are 100% sober. And I know everybody's going to say, oh, you could have a drink. Not when you have problems. 100% sober. And if you ever are not, the remainder of the contract is void, walk. You're gone. And and I don't owe you another penny, right? If you stay sober, it's all there. Uh, it seems like they went a different route because then later it came out. This is a minor league deal. Um, and Jason Mackey tweeted this uh, from a pirate source. He said the team met with Herman and his wife several times, as well as various team league and MLBPA sources. This has been going on for a while and they've been doing their homework. I, yeah. I respect that. However, what they came up with is it says the organization's stance is he has to earn his way 
back to the big leagues with strong off-field and on-field work. Now, Mackie has something out here on it. Alex Stumpf has something out there on it. The, the guys are writing about this. I'm sure there's more details. I have not gotten a chance to read either one of those, right? But I've seen, uh, I've seen these bits and pieces. And the thing is, is if the team is going to go out of their way, and, they're, and they stick to this, this guy basically is only going to make it to the majors if he's on his best behavior. And right. he pitches well. And performing, yeah. Because let's not forget that, like, it's not like he was lights out last year. I mean, he, sure, he threw a no hitter, but, or was it perfect? Was it a perfect game or a no hitter? You got me. I don't care. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I can't remember. Either way, right? I, I'm not, as a full season, he wasn't awesome. Now, some of that has to do with maybe the incident and whatnot. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But, you just have to make sure that he not only performs, but that he's also being good and he's not causing problems. You don't have to look it up. It doesn't matter. We're going to move on in it a second. It was perfect. Okay, it was perfect. It was perfect. So anyway, any anything to add there before we move on to Taylor? Not really. I mean, you've, you've touched on it all. I mean, he's going to have to be a good human, you know what I mean, <laughs> as well as a good pitcher. So... I mean, it is what it is. It's a minor league deal. So it's like whatever to me. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want him to affect anybody down there either, but I think if the if the organization can hold to their to their statements here, uh and if mm -hmm. something does happen, I, I think it I think in this case and I'm somebody who believes in you know, giving people chances. Um yeah. I still think that like this is your chance. This still should be a zero tolerance policy here. And you yeah, know what I mean? 100%. It's not like you're, it's not like you're going to off the dude, right? You're just going to release him from a baseball team. It's not like you can't right, have another chance right. at life. You know what I mean? But, um, it, right. it, you know what I mean? It, it just doesn't mean that you it's, have to play baseball. <laughs> playing, playing major league baseball is a privilege. Sure. And just, you, you got, you got to treat it as so. Yeah. And, uh, and they're saying he has to earn it. So, and I think that as a, as a person who's, who admits he has a problem, I could see him accepting this and saying, I understand and you know, I appreciate the opportunity. So maybe we'll see. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh obviously, yeah, you know, that goes a lot of ways. Let's talk about Michael A. Taylor. Sure. First thought. First thought when I texted you and you'd read the thing and then got my text. First <laughs> thought. Go ahead, give it to me. Uh, I said this sounds like a 2019 Pirates move. <laughs> But it's not. I mean, it's it's better than that. It's it's not. It's not a terrible player. You know, you're 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 getting an elite defender, in in a decent bat. Okay, so you've had some time to think about it. You've had time to look right. up numbers. You've had some time. Now we talked about him before, and our thing was he's got to out hit the next guy. And thinking that may be like a Palacios or a, you know what I mean, Olivares or whoever it is. Because mm -hmm. understanding that if Michael Taylor plays, he's going to center field. But right. it's going to bump Jack to right. And so somebody's getting bumped out of the lineup. Yeah. And I don't, my, 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 my statements that I made, I think it was December or January when we talked about this. The statements that I made was this offense needs to score runs and we weren't a hundred percent confidence that this offense can. And, but we, we even need more because we're not a hundred percent confidence in the starting rotation necessarily. Right. Some of this is changing as, as we, as we look, we're seeing better at bats. We're seeing a, a fair amount of power. Um, yeah. you know, so we're starting to think like, okay, maybe this offense could absorb somebody who's strictly defense. Um, you know, can you, I don't know. I don't know, but that's when regular season comes around. We'll we'll have our answers. This is still spring training, after all. Mm -hmm. So you know you have to be cautious of not over over you know over hyping everything. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. But also, you know, however however it spins, however it uh, plays out, you're for four million dollars, which is about half of what I thought when we were talking about this last time. Yeah. You know what I mean? He made four and a half million the last two years. 
So this is a pay cut for him. Mm-hmm. And that to me is like, okay, we got a 33 year old coming in who's, you know, big part of his game is his defense, which probably includes speed. That's going to be impacted just by age in general. I think 33 is still okay. You know what I mean? So I'm not, you know, too worried about it, but, um, let me take you through some of the quotes that we had, uh, earlier this off season. Uh, our, our first gripe was about using his middle initial all the time. <laughs> uh, I've just chosen to just call him Michael Taylor. This is no big deal then, or just Taylor and it's no big deal. Um, but one of the quotes, he's not a great hitter. I understand you're saying we need a center fielder. The team's desperate to score runs, especially considering the starting rotation. These are all the things I just kind of talked about. Taylor doesn't help you score runs. Maybe, but these guys are probably going to give up home runs. <laughs> so they're going to walk guys. I get the idea, but like he's not going to help with walks and home runs on de- on defense. But um, he did hit 21 home runs last year. You made a You made a statement that if he's playing at PNC Park, maybe he doesn't get to 21. So there's right. some, there's some of that too. Um, and then, and then basically it was about, you know, you can't carry six outfielders necessarily on the roster. That's just, you know, that's, you need more infielders in that sense. There's actually an extra position in the infield. So it makes sense to say you need more infielders. Um, <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, it, it's just kind of one of those things. So where are you at as you got the, kind of sit back because I feel like I'm in a different place now than I was when we talked about this last time because of I'm a little more optimistic about the offense for one. I don't know if I'm a little more optimistic about the rotation or not. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) So we'll get there. Um, But for $4 million, it's a big deal for me. It's not a two year deal, which is what we thought. We thought it would be more like, eight to 10 million. I am different about this because of that. And because I think they're pretty committed to, uh, I I don't know though. I don't know. I'm not going to go there. I'm I'm not going to go there. Let me just hear your thoughts. Now that you've had, like you said, now that you've had some time to sit back, you're not as upset about it as you were. Yeah. Well, like for starters, I'm going to say something I haven't said to you yet. The only thing I really don't love about it is I don't love that he's this is going to sound strange. Don't love it that he's an elite center fielder because we signed into a one year deal. So let's move Jack to left or right for one year. Then he goes back to center. Like, dude, if he's your center fielder, he's your center fielder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, You know, I just I just feel like you're just pulling Jack away from the position that you will probably want him at long term for now. We don't have a center fielder waiting to come up. True. You know what I mean? So it's not like we'll plug him in for a year and then this guy's going to be ready for center field next year. Mm -hmm. Unless they think Bay is going to be ready for center field next year. I I don't know. Maybe that's their thought process. Yeah, they definitely like him in center Bay. I mean, you got to like him in center better than, you know, second. I think if he commits to center field, he'll he'll get better there. And and that's something I've been saying this whole time. I, I feel like his he profiles best as a center fielder, and if he plays out there all the time, maybe he'll get better at it. Maybe he'll get good at it. He, he Yeah, I mean, let's not forget that he also needs to, to hit, and he hasn't right. done that yet, so there, there's some of that too. Uh, but this isn't about Bay. Let's let's stay on task right. here. Um, I don't want I don't want to derail you. <laughs> right, right. So, but yeah, I get what you're saying. But other, I, but other than that, other than that, on the on the other side of that, I do like picking up an elite center fielder. Let me ask you this: Did this team, did this lineup, this team, because lineup matters, right? Did this lineup, this defensive mm-hmm. lineup and offensive lineup? Did this team get better with that signing and have a better chance to win more games than they did before the signing? Even if it's I two mean, more I, games. I, sure. I'm gonna say yeah. I okay. Mean, let's let's face it, our 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 right fielders weren't 
getting the job done. Yeah. I know it's spring training, but well, yeah, it just hasn't it, been great. W- so we've talked about this before. Like, hey, you're going through the motions. Key Brian Hayes is out there. He's going through the motions. Right, mm-hmm. he's making sure that he gets his legs underneath him. He's making sure that his timing's on. We talked about Brian Reynolds, like the the average is, eh, but he's hitting the ball hard, right? So we've really liked where mm-hmm. he was at. When you made, when we said that, and we made, and you have that clip where you're saying, "I really like where he's at." He was hitting like 197, but it wasn't about his batting average, right? You you saw good right. swing decisions. He was hitting the ball hard. I said the same thing about Jack Swinski. He was really impressed with me. He was hitting the ball hard. He was hitting 203. But then the last two days, you start to get closer to the season. Jack's had back-to-back three-hit games, home run in each one. This is how he does it, right? I understand. Mm -hmm. Say what you want. But the thing is, is as you get closer to the season, you're going to start seeing those regular players. Brian Reynolds had two hits today. Kutch had two hits today. You're going to start seeing them start to, like, things are going to start clicking. And that's Mm -hmm. normal. However, if you're playing for a spot, you don't have time to do that. You have right. to perform. You don't you don't mm-hmm. just think about let me get my legs under me. It's let me get my job. Mm-hmm. So Triolo, Piguero, Gonzalez, Henry Davis, Olivares, Palacios, who's been, you know, dealing with an injury and then a sickness, and then who knows what else? He's barely played. Um Connor Joe, which I think he was safe, but like he doesn't have a starting spot, so he's playing for something. Yeah. Uh, and then you talk about like non-rosters like Jake Lamb and and Billy McKinney and Celestino. And, you know, you've seen little flashes of all these guys actually doing things and getting results because if you're fighting for a job, results matter. Yeah. So by sure. saying Palacios and Olivares, and Olivares has had more. You said this before. We were looking at this. He's got more at-bats than anybody else on the team because he's getting a shot and it hasn't been great. That doesn't mean he's not ever going to be a good player. It means you may not make this team out of the gate. You're going to have to go to triple a and start clicking in order to get a shot. And who's going to get that spot? Well, now it's Taylor because they've just signed him and brought him in when you didn't like any of your center field options. You had to go get a center field option. And now they have one. See, you didn't like yeah. any of if if Jack got a day off, you didn't feel good about anyone going out there. Right, right, and, and that and that's the thing. So then they, they with they Bay went hurt. Out not only right, and they didn't just say, "Oh, let's get a right fielder that can play center." They went and they just got a center fielder because he was the best available free agent that was, you know, a smart decision to to pick up. Yeah, would now would you rather have him or Duvall? Taylor Duvall, which I mean, one? Duvall just got picked up too, right? So I mean, right. I, I, me personally, I'd rather have Duvall, but really, so because Duvall's terrible in center field, he can play it, but he's terrible. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, and I'll and I'll take him. I'll take that bat. Okay, with with a with a below average defense. But either way, I I don't hate the signing. I, I really don't. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it, I don't. I also don't love it. Like, I'm not in love with this signing. I think for four million dollars, I, I you could get me there. If he starts playing well, I'm I'm in love with it. Right. Sure. Um, sure. But I'm with you as well. I I will ask one more question about the whole the comments because I like that the comments about hey you know what are you are you gonna play teeter totter here with Jack a little bit if you have a guy who's an elite center fielder. Then when he comes into play, yes, you move you move Sawinski over. But I think if Sawinski's the starter in center field and Taylor come when Taylor comes in, he moves over. But if Taylor's out there most days and you're saying, well, then Jack is your left fielder and Jack subs into center when Taylor's not in, I think that plays a little different role and speaks more to what you're saying. But let me ask you this: like, do you think that long term they do see Jack as a center fielder or were they saying this is our best available guy we're going to keep putting him out there until we get somebody else I feel like they I I thought they you know thought this dude was a good center fielder you know what I mean like he's he's our center fielder yeah 
Yeah, I think for me, I mean, he has to be in the lineup, period. And I think mm-hmm. that he's fine in center field. I think that the metrics that everybody claims, I think, are – are I, they're not perfect for outfielders for sure. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that maybe there's some some unfavorable metrics. But we've seen with Sawinski that – I mean, remember, we talked about Corey Dickerson before, like earlier this week when you and I were talking. Like, yeah, Corey Dickerson was bad too, and he won a gold glove. You know what I'm saying? So, like, anybody yeah. can work their way into being better – if they have the skills, Jack definitely has the skills, mm-hmm. and and just like just like Bay has the skills, but he's right now just so bad, and he could be better with the work. Right. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. I, I I don't think I think that Jack long term would be best in like a right field. I think that the arm is super undervalued. It was an above average arm when he played right field. And then when he played center, it was below average. So I don't know, like, did he just not have as many opportunities to unleash it or what? Like, because those are metrics based on what you actually did. They didn't take him out into a Mm -hmm. yard and say, how good's your arm? They just said, based on his opportunities, (laughs) this is what his arm was compared to other center fielders. If If he was above average in right field, where all the best arms are, then I feel like he's he's got the arm. He just has he just didn't show it off in center. Yeah. Maybe in that maybe that was opportunity. I don't know. You get a lot of opportunities at PNC Park because you take that ball yeah. off the wall. You're trying to throw a guy out at second, so you get a right. lot of opportunities to throw hard at that stadium. So I, I you know I don't know. Either way, that's another rabbit trail. I think long term you'd you'd rather have a better defensive center fielder long term. You just would have to. Uh, what? You fall in that your Charlie chair. Horse. You have a Charlie horse. This is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he just makes a sound, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was your chair. Jake's chair also just like goes down, like just drops on him every once in a while. Um, this is really good. I'm going to pivot to the next thing here while Jake deals with this Charlie horse. And if it doesn't go away here in a second, we'll probably pause and give him a moment. Uh, but for those of you watching on YouTube, you can kind of laugh at him for a little bit while he makes these faces. <laughs> He's cracking up right now. <laughs> um, we're going to get into some starting uh, starting pitching here. And we're going to work our way into talking about the roster a little bit. And we're going to start with the starting rotation because this is obviously one of the hot topics of where we're going. What is this team going to look like? What are, you know, what are the results so far in spring training? We just talked about results are important for those who are fighting for a spot. And well, let's start with Ronzi Contreras and Bailey Falter, who probably with zero options had the, a leg up in the race to start things off. Strictly based on that. Are you okay? Not yet. All right, not yet. Both Bailey Falter and Ronzi Contreras have struggled mightily. Um, We had one good outing from probably each. Um, Even the good outing from Contreras was like, hey, we liked what we saw, but there were some results that were mixed. And so... It's really been a, a tough, a tough spring for him. Eight oh three ERA right now for Bailey Falter, uh, with a one point seven WHIP. Uh, Roanzi a seven fifty nine with a one nine seven WHIP. He has ten walks and ten and two thirds innings. Roanzi does, and you know Bailey Falter the walks haven't been there because he throws everything right over the middle and he's getting crushed. A ton of hard contact off of him, even though he has 11 strikeouts. So the strikeouts are kind of there, but he's give, he's he's it's a 345 average against him. He's given up four home runs, 11 earned runs, 19 hits in 12 innings. Like it's been ugly. And then you look at like 11 strikeouts and two walks. Well, that's not terrible, but everything else is bad. And then you look at. Rowanzi, who's, you know, given up five hits in 11 innings and only two runs. I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. 11 hits in 10 innings, 
nine runs, and you're just, you know, it's a lot of the same stuff. Not quite as many hits. But then he's walked 10 and struck out four. So he's not even, I mean, it's just not been good for either one of them. Two years younger is Contreras, if that matters to anybody. Neither one of these guys have options. There's no way these guys make your starting rotation. No, they're out. Welcome back, Jake. Yeah, it's it's not gone, but we'll, we'll push through. <laughs> this is dedication, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's pause right. it. Let's pause it. We'll be right back. A little bit of a peek into the whole brother thing. I, I probably should have had a little more sympathy earlier than that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I just thought it would go away. I, I haven't... I haven't experienced those long Charlie horses yet. You must be older than me. <laughs> Ooh, no? No. No, okay. No. Okay, don't do that to you, huh? All right, so anyway, um, I said some things here <laughs> about Contreras and Falter and, and some numbers and stuff. Uh, so uh, where are you at? What are you thinking here? Uh, I, you know, I just think with the Contreras falter thing, it's just been struggle after struggle. You know what I mean? Like they're not, neither one of them stepping up. Those results that we were just talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. So if they're out, then there's two spots that, you know, they were going for. Let's talk about some of the other options for that. We mentioned, uh, well, first off, Luis Ortiz was on that list. Quinn Priester was on that list. And then earlier in the spring, we find out Jared Jones is on that list. And we weren't sure how serious they were, but they were saying it. So we're going to hold them to it. Um, Is there a chance that there's a non-roster? Uh, I guess Jared Jones is non-roster. So you know what I mean? But to go one step further, maybe like Chase Anderson. Is there a chance? I mean, he's he's been very good. Uh, he's I been don't... good. I, it's just it's you got to blow you away. Seven innings. If I pull up the baseball reference, I'm still waiting for for some updates on there. Uh, we've talked about opponent quality and and things like that. Um, so when I look at Chase Anderson. Uh, as far as opponent quality goes, uh, what what I just say for the innings? Seven? Seven. Okay, so he hasn't pitched in a in a game since Wednesday, since this has been updated. That opponent quality is a six point seven, which is meaning that he's mostly facing you know double A ish players, maybe a little less than double A players on average, right? Yeah. So, I mean, he's obviously, if he's faced major leaguers, he's done well because he hasn't given up a run yet. Um, He's only struck out three. He's walked two. He's a lot of ground balls. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's uh, <laughs> Everything's good. Yeah. So, uh, he's faced 22 hitters. Um, it, Man, that just, it does, it just makes it, it makes it tough to really know. I would assume if right. he has a shot, he's going to have to start a game against some major leaguers this week. You know what I'm saying? These next seven, eight games, you're going to have to see him go against, you know what I mean, some some better hitters and see how he fares because that's a big move. I mean, we're talking about non-roster guys, and we're going to talk about them here. I mean, in the last, you know, 20 minutes or so of this, we're, you know, there's going to be some conversations about this. There's moves to make if you pull the non-roster guy in there. Right. So I think right. for starters and, and with Chase Anderson, what's his chances? I don't. I just don't think they're good, man. I I really don't. Dude's thirty six years old, and I, I I just don't. He hasn't done enough throughout his career to say you know we give him a, a more of a shot because of what he's done. Hmm. Let me ask you this. Makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Let me ask you this. What do you need from from him? What do you need from maybe these last two spots, or maybe because if it's a different guy, right? But if it's a, but if it's right. a Chase Anderson, what do you need from him? And what do you need from maybe even like we've said, Marco Gonzalez is probably in this thing. 
You know what I mean? That whole move. You, you know your three, Keller, Perez, Gonzalez, whether you like them or not, you, you know that they're probably starting this season in the rotation. They're your one, two, three. doesn't matter what order they're in. I'm just saying they're, they're one, two, three. And, you know, it's those last two spots. And so what do you need from him? Are you assuming Paul Skeens does make this team this year? If so, whether it's June, whether it's August, or anywhere around, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you need him to get you all the way there? If you're a guy who says, man, I think maybe Priester is good, but not starting. How long until Priester's there? Does does he only need to get you that far? What about Jared Jones if he doesn't start on the roster? When does Jared Jones make his debut? May, June? If so, does Chase Anderson only have to get me there? When you say that, does he has a chance? Because that's Jared Jones and, and a Paul Skeens, that'd be a one-to-one move. One guy gets DFA'd, the other guy gets added. That's a that's you don't have to say, like, well, then, you know, how what are you gonna do? Just pass him on weight. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have a direct move to make. You've got to add somebody to. And then you're what you're doing with Chase Anderson is if he's earned something better. Maybe you, you put him on waivers, you try to make a trade. You know what I'm saying? And then you and then you yeah. get your debut. Do you do something like that? If he's doing well, do you, does that prolong it, right? The only time is if he's if he struggles. So anyway, that's a lot to say. How long do you really need him? I, I don't at all. I don't I just don't need him. <laughs> I, I, that's just where I'm at. And I, I understand he's having a good showing in spring, but he Good job, but but you know you haven't been able to win a spot on any team you've really been on, and you really haven't had to, to sustain uh, any real major league stints. You know, uh, it's, I, I, I he's not where the Pirates are. Mm. Two teams last year: Tampa Bay and Colorado. Made seventeen starts in Colorado. He did not start in Tampa Bay. Five seventy-five ERA and eighty innings. Year before that, he was in Cincinnati, made seven starts, 638. Year before that, he was in Philly, nine starts, 675, 14 appearances total. Year before that, he was in Toronto, seven starts, 10 outings, 722. I mean, this is not good. Right. And then there was the years in Milwaukee, which were, I mean, he had one really good year back in 2017. That's a long time ago. But he was making starts every year, 21, 27, 30, 25, 30, 27. Actually, the first two of those, 21, 27, those were in Arizona. So, I mean, and he was like, you know, for two years, 2017, I'm sorry, 2018, he had a 393 and 30 starts, 158 innings. Like, yeah, that's good enough, too. But it hasn't I guess been I didn't good really for the go back far enough. But. But, but how far do you go back? I mean, the last four years, it's been really bad. Right. And that's, you know, since 2020, really. Yeah. It's been bad. So with that said, I guess that's fair to say that the the 2020 season, the seven starts and 10, 10 outings, like that's most of the season really <laughs> in 2020. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, when you look at, when you look at that, you're saying, well, it's, it's gotta be a lot in order to say, I don't need anything from him. You have to be confident that there's two other guys that are showing up. So what do you got? Who's your two guys? Maybe three guys. Where do you think we're at right now? Talk about somebody else. Pick somebody. Are we jumping to the rotation right now? Well, that's what we're we're talking. Well, that's what we're talking about. I'm not asking you to put the the five in right now. I'm saying, I got you. You know, we're at that whole section of the notes where it just says starting pitching. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, We're shaping that out though. Right, right. My three guys that I'm looking at right now are, are, are Priester, Ortiz, and Jared Jones is just keeps knocking on the door, and he is performing against a little bit better talent and mm-hmm. you know a lot younger. And we're we're actually looking for this guy to be something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lineup that he just faced on Saturday in Atlanta was essentially everyone but Acuna. And and Sean Murphy, but like you said, Darno is still a capable hitter at the plate too. Yeah, this is a very good lineup. Mm-hmm. And he went four scoreless innings with two hits and four strikeouts and a walk. I mean, he was he was good. Mm-hmm. And that was the start for me. 
to see him go four innings. How many pitches is he throwing here? Uh, it's not that one. That's ground outs, fly outs. Where are we at? Do we not have a number of pitches? Should be just NP. Uh, well, no, usually it's down at the bottom of the box score and it is not on here. I knew we were limited, but it looks like we don't have actual pitch count. We have ground outs, fly outs, and we have batters face. He faced 14 hitters, but we don't have a number of pitches. Good. Usually you get the number of pitches and the number of strikes, right? Yeah, it's not at right. the bottom of the box score here. So, uh, they, they obviously didn't even have that. <laughs> So, okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, but either way, to see him go four innings, 14 hitters against a very good lineup and do very good, now you're starting to say, oh, okay, may maybe. Who's his competition? Let's go right. Luis Ortiz, right? How's Luis Ortiz looking? What have you seen and what have you liked? Because I think it's been mostly good. I think that he's yeah, got the I, best track record. Right. I mean, the strikeouts are there. He's pitched 12 innings, he's got 15 strikeouts. The walks are also there, the problem of them. He's got seven walks right. during that time. So that's, right. you know, that's one of the things that you're saying, okay. Yeah, I mean, opponents batting 209, I like seeing that. He's Their hard to base hit. percentage is better because this, you know, the seven walks, but I don't know, man. I, I just, I kind of like where he's at. I, I, obviously I think he's to the point where he needs to work on a, like the walks and stuff like that, but he can do that at the major league level while he's starting in the, the five spot in our rotation four or five. Yeah. You know what I mean, Yep. Like I just Yep, I get that. He's a guy he's he's a guy that I would look at and say, I need you to pitch well enough until so and so gets here. And I would pick him over Chase Anderson every day. Yeah. Okay. I get that. I you think it I that, think it's possibly I, sorry, go ahead. No, I just that, that's why I'm so out on Chase Anderson. Like I just don't yeah. think he's an option. I think it's possibly a situation where you say Luis Ortiz, it, this is kind of your shot. Mm -hmm. We've got guys coming. If you're going to be a part of this, let's see what you got. Let's start you there yeah, now. Now's the time. Now's the time because eventually you're saying, I mean, Perez and, and, and Gonzalez are on one-year deals. I mean, I know Gonzalez has an option, but it's for like $20 million. It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> but either way, like you're saying these guys are on – you know, one year deals basically. Is he going to be a part of this next year? If so, he has to be a part of it the rest of this year. And so yeah. there's like a part of that to say, like, hey, when Jared Jones comes up, if he's not already there, when Paul Skeens comes up, if there's somebody else, I mean, you know, there's other names, there's other guys. I don't know if they're necessarily beating down the door the way that maybe those two guys are. But, yeah, but you also have injuries. You got Brubaker coming back. That's right. You got so Brubaker coming back. Name. You don't know if Burroughs, if he comes back, good. He could be a guy pushing his way. Um, Braxton Ashcraft is 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 on this roster now. Jackson Wolf. I mean, if he if he breaks out, there's guys that are that are close, right? That that mm -hmm. are knocking. And who's gonna be the best? Now, obviously, not everybody works out. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody has a great year. So you've – it's some way it's going to play out, but you'd like to see Luis Ortiz get the shot now. Right. Quinn Priester and Jared Jones, on the other hand, if they don't get the shot right out of the gate, they could still come up later. They still could prove themselves. They still could be great pitchers. They're both young with, obviously, Jones no time and Priester just a little time. I could see a, an Ortiz Anderson if that's the way they wanted to go. Get Anderson to the point where Jared Jones is ready. And then, like I said, if Anderson's not cutting it, you make the swap, you go. Or Quinn Priester or whatever. I could see that. So let's move on to this spot. What is your five man rotation heading into the season? This is not what you would pick necessarily, but this is where you think it's going to be. We got Keller, Perez, Gonzalez, and how do you round out those two spots? What's your what's your guess? Now that we've talked about it all, 
<laughs> it's for me, it's just still two of those three. It's Priest or Ortiz and, and Jones. And I, I don't really don't see have, anybody else. If I'm going to ask you, make a pick. Right. Right now, I'm going to say Priester and Ortiz. Okay. That's who I have too. I'm really impressed with Priester so far. And I mm. think it's, he's nothing left to prove in AAA. He's right. not a roster move that you have to make right out of the gate. I right. think if, if you're, if, you know, Jones, uh, give these guys a shot. Jones is the first call up. Yeah. After today, I'm not sure. You're trying to win. <laughs> Do you just, <laughs> but like, I don't feel bad about either of those guys. As a matter of fact, I right. mean, there's a chance I could say, can we just put Jones, Ortiz, and Priester there and not Gonzalez or something like that? <laughs> All right, right. Let's, let's talk right. about your I mean, bullpen. I'm going to say Bednar, Chapman, Holderman, Majinski are there. Brocky, let's put Brocky in there. He's there. Who's your last three? Um, I got Hernandez. I actually have Stratton in there making the team. I do too. And I got one of Falter or Contreras. For me, it's, it's Contreras. I want to see if he can figure it out because he's younger and I think his ceiling is higher. I'm just so done with Falter. I'm ready to move on. Um, and so I, yeah. I'm picking Contreras in that case. I understand what you're saying. I'm in the same boat. There's no options. You just don't want to throw everybody out there and hope that Brent Honeywell and, and Hunter Stratton can get it done because then you have no long man. And I don't want Ortiz Priester or Jones being a long man or even Chase Anderson for that fact. But Contreras is on a short leash, man. I just, I don't know how far you're trying mm -hmm. to win games now. We can't just sit here and ride right. things out. So I, I right. just don't know. All right, your catchers are Davis and Delay. I'm not. We think Grandall's on the IL, so I'm not going to really mess around there. I don't think there's anything there. Infielders: Telez, Cruz, Hayes, uh, and then second base. Who do you have starting second base? Who's your winner of the second base? I got Peggy. You got Peggy as the starter. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'll go Triolo right now. I, I think he gets the first shot at it. Here's what I also think. I think that they play almost the same amount of innings because as soon as Hayes gets a day off it's Triolo at third as soon as Cruz gets a day off I guess it could be Piguero at, at short or Triolo I, it doesn't matter um, I think there's plenty yeah. of playing time I think they'll split time pretty well I think they'll continue this battle into the season I think there's plenty of at bats for the two of them uh, but they're the two making my roster is Triolo on your roster yeah yeah absolutely okay <laughs> okay yeah without a doubt all right, so I'm going to leave that open, right? There could be another infielder on this roster too. Um, Reynolds, Sawinski, Taylor, we've talked about that. Connor Joe, Andrew McCutcheon, that's five outfielders. I Kind of. Kutch is a DH. If they're right. slowing him down this much, he's a DH, and he's probably not going to play much outfield as we thought. Maybe there would be some shots. I'm not right. sure. So here's what I'm going to say. We've got... Palacios and Olivares for the outfield still. And we said some things about them. We've got Nick Gonzalez, Alika Williams for the infield still. I mean, we think we think Bay is on the IL, so he's not included in this. Um, and then also there's Sung Shea Chang, but I don't think he's I mean, we're not he's he's not gonna make the roster, right? Right. Um, and then there's some non-roster guys that I just don't uh I don't know. I, I would leave open. That last bench spot, do you go... So let's say Palacios has barely played. Is he on your roster? He's not on mine. I, I, think, okay. I think he's got to get more innings. Okay, so he's either optioned or an IL stint and then optioned if it's not a, a shot. Yeah. Olivares, we, we've talked about. Dude, I'm sending him down and seeing if he can figure it out. Yeah. And give him some, ch nope. some chance. So then you have Nick Gonzalez, Alika Williams. Where do you sit here? I mean, I don't think, I don't think it's any doubt in my mind. It's Gonzalez, just because I, I just don't think Alika Williams can hit. But if he's barely playing, I mean, we just talked about the scenarios. Like, when is is Gonzalez even going to get a chance to play? If he's infield only, and you've got Triolo and Pagaro doing the lion's share of second base and 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 covering the rest of those positions. I mean, Nick Gonzalez can play. I think comfortably he can play second and third he can play short but probably as good as Piquero can um 
you probably would prefer Triola there, really. So I, right. you know, I don't know how many at bats there are for him. And so I, I'm kind of indifferent on that too. I think there are moves you could make off this 40 man roster. I want to know what you think about Billy McKinney, a left-handed outfielder who also can play first, has played first this spring, but Billy McKinney, who's playing really well right now and yeah. he's, he's getting on base. He's playing well. What do you think if, I mean, if the roster moves are made, let's let Nick Gonzalez play. Would you entertain that? I know it's another outfielder, but would you entertain that? I would entertain it. I mean, you got to remember you put Joe in as an outfielder and he can play infield as well. Sure. He's um, really been in the outfield yeah, a lot, but he can play first some first. Base. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that he plays anywhere else on the infield, but, but you have I think he can, but yeah. But with Triolo and Pagaro, I mean, you really do have you don't need to. Yeah. And if he, any of those guys go down an injury, they're easily replaced by Nick Gonzalez and you can just business as usual. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I would entertain the keep Gonzalez playing. That. Right. Yeah. So as far as those DFA candidates on that roster, um, you know, you got to think about how many you you would you would um, you would call up, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about, I mean, at this point, Colin Selby. We've talked about how his struggles are. He's a candidate. Bailey Falters already. If you're going to send him down, you may as well DFA him because he is out of options anyway. He's clearing waivers no matter what. So you, you're DFAing him when you send him down. You have to designate him for assignment. Yeah. There is no option available. So you're sending him down, you're DFAing him. So he's off the, the 40 man anyway, in that case. Yeah. Um Contreras is another one who's actually a candidate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh Josh Fleming, I'm not really sure how that goes, but neither one of us said Josh Fleming. And right. he's got that like minors majors thing. If he doesn't make the major league roster, it's a minors deal, but does he does he remain on the 40 man or does he get dropped and clear waivers and do that whole thing? Cause I believe, and we talked about this before and I know that Ethan settled my settled it straight and I, and I already forgot. So forgive me, <laughs> Ethan, I'm sure I'm going to get a tweet and I appreciate all of those. Cause the guy, he knows it. So he'll correct me on that and I'll retweet it. So for anybody who's listening and wants to know, check the Twitter, it'll be there. Or the X post. Um, other than that, I mean, Alika Williams is another option. I mean, Ali Sanchez, we didn't even talk about him. If he doesn't make the team, yeah. I think he's out of options. So he's he's off the 40-man as well. So there are plenty of opportunities for guys to be added like McKinney and Stratton. And we didn't talk about um, the other reliever, Honeywell, as well, mm -hmm. who, who could possibly be in that mix depending on what's going on in the background because his numbers are good as well. He hasn't faced quite the competition that Stratton has. But, I mean, it's hard to ignore the, the strikeouts. And um, and like I said, if they like his stuff in bullpens, then if he's better than Stratton, they'll, they'll go that route too. So, I mean, there's guys. There's yeah, spots available. Absolutely. So, uh, you know. And, it, and, and we're at that spot and all this, like, you know, we're spots are there to be taken. They're not. Yeah. Things aren't just given. Like, yep. And here's my thing with with whether Sorry. it's Anderson, Stratton, Honeywell, or McKinney. You're giving them a shot. They don't have to stick. Right. If they don't, then Palacios comes back up. Smith and Jigba comes back up. Olivares comes back up. Excuse me. One of those guys can just, just come back up, and you can yeah. clear him through waivers and, and go from there, right? So... That's kind of where I'm at with it. I, I think my last spot, actually, as I've been looking and as I'm as I'm watching right now, if the if the if spring training ended right now, I think I might give McKinney a shot. And I know a lot of people are cringing right now, but he's hot right now. Let's it's another left-handed bat in the outfield, which right now isn't there. Yeah. Once Bay's back, once Palacio's clicking. If he's not doing well, then it, it's an easy decision, right? You just bring those guys back up and you and you go from there. If if Smith and Jigba's crushing, I know you're a Smith and Jigba guy. Um, so for me, that's it. Uh, as far as that, I like Stratton. I like what you're saying there, but Ortiz and Priester. So pretty interesting to see how that shapes up. Uh, but we've got our picks in, and not really our picks, right? 
Right. Not really our picks, but <laughs> what we've got our guesses in if if everything ended right now. This next week is going to be really telling. And it's going to be interesting to come back yeah. even a week later and see what we've learned and maybe if our minds have been changed in one way or another. Any of these guys like Anderson or Honeywell or Stratton or or whatever, any of these guys get blown up one 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 outing if they face major league hitters and just get blown up could change our mind that easily, that quickly could change yeah. our mind because because of the fact that they haven't faced those guys yet that much. Right. So Yeah. Um, let me check as of, uh, as of Wednesday, like I said, baseball reference not being updated. Um, Billy McKinney, his opponent quality is the third. Oh no, that's, it's 7.3. So lower side, like where Celestino is. He's not facing great competition. Now that's as of Wednesday. He had a nice game today. Yeah. I don't, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we look and, and that is a little bit different by then. You know what I'm saying? And Edward Olivares right. and, and Palacios have faced good players, but Palacios played two games. <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? I, he's just not ready to be yeah. there right now. I don't, I don't see him on this roster. So. That's where I'm at with him. It's just he's just not ready. All right. Well, that was fun. Uh, fun exercise. Next week we're gonna do our yearly projections and hot takes. We, we've done it different in the past. If you've been listening the last couple of years, we've done way too many things. Uh, we're we're going to, we're going to cut it down this year. Um, yeah. And, you know, instead of the milds and wilds that we've always done, uh, we're going to go with some hot takes and some, what we say, what we decide on cold takes. I, I think so. Okay. Either way. Um, we're going to do our, our 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 projections. We're going to tell you where we think the Pirates are going to finish the season or, uh, you know, we'll talk about where they should and where we think they will or could, rather, uh, and what's upsetting if they, if they finish, you know, with X amount of wins or whatever. So we'll do our wins, our, our record pr- predictions, and uh, we'll do some some hot takes, some cold takes, on some maybe some players or team things, whatever we decide, and uh, have a nice little discussion about it. But I, lo- I love doing the the predictions and and the picks and stuff like that at the beginning of the year because I love revisiting it at the end of the year and say this is just where to see we how were wrong at. We are well. It's not just that, but it's it's also an idea of like this is where this it proves every year that you don't play this game on paper. Right. I mean, how many years are we going to say that, that that San Diego likes to win the off season, but they don't care much to win the regular season because they are not doing that. <laughs> so you know the Dylan Cease pick or trade. Well, how's that going to work out for him? Well, they they won the off season again. Oh, good. Even though they didn't this year, but right. Yeah. But either way, you, you get what I'm saying. So we're going to yep. do that kind of stuff next week. Stick around for that. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Enjoy your week. Jake, do you have anything in closing mm-hmm. here? I should I should play music. Uh, it's just, yeah. It's just this next week's going to be kind of important for some of these battles, man. Let's just see how they play out. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see regular season coming. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and we'll obviously talk to you next week about I'm that. opener's not too, mo- too far away. Yeah, so... But this is a big week for these guys, man. Mm-hmm. Go get it, guys. Let's go, Bucks. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming. And let's go Bucks.